Hey guys, I'm Eddie Joe, and this particular video is going to be about how I stayed up to date with everything that's going on in the critical care world. First, why do I do this? Well, I'm in private practice right now, I'm not an academic, so I do not have a number of people asking me constantly to provide data behind all the decisions I make. The nurses and other physicians usually just say, hey, you're the specialist, you know what you're doing, and they let me do my thing. But I think that Critical care has so much to offer and there's so much research, so much new data coming out right now that it will be very irresponsible of me to not keep up to date. So this video is showing you what it is I do to stay up to date. And it's not a lot, but it might be a lot to some, but it's definitely doable. Keep in mind that I only do critical care and so it's not that big a deal for me to stay up to date. I feel it's a responsibility I have to my patients and as well as to my hospital, my community, my consultants who count on me to make all the right decisions and do so with some evidence in mind. I try to have evidence for everything I do, but the truth is in critical care, there's not evidence for a lot of the things we do, at least not good evidence. I'd also like to say that doing research is really hard and every article could be shredded to bits. Uh, and I think there should be some sort of interrogation to every article, but at the same time, keeping in mind of how challenging research is and the fact that they can't get every nuance under control for every single study. So. That's that, let's get started. The first thing I do to stay up to date and the first thing I would tell you all to do, and I'm gonna put links to everything below. If you learn something from this, please give me a thumbs up, help the channel grow. But the first thing is this website called criticalcarereviews.com. Let me double check, yes it is. And it's run by this guy named Paul McSweeney and he's a very, very important guy. And what he does is every week he sends out this email that uh, states everything that's happened in critical care within the last week and I'll go through that email with you all. Let's take a look at there first. I really recommend you subscribe to his newsletter. And this is actually, I'm going to go over to this screen right now. This is what his website actually looks like. It's called criticalcarereviews.com as listed here. And you can scroll down and it's a very pretty, pretty website. Uh, Paul McSweeney does, excuse me, Rob McSweeney does not know that I'm doing this. But the way you actually get the newsletter, just so you all know, is that you will go here to uh, on the top, CCR resources, click on where it says newsletter let it load and then there's a bar here that it's in black text with everything else so it's hard to see but you can also register for the weekly email version of the newsletter which is what i suggest you do i do this and this is where i get the majority of my data click on that and he's going to ask you for a bunch of information which i feel no qualms whatsoever registering but what this allows you to obtain is this particular email which i'm going to show you here which is a newsletter and every month excuse me every week he sends this on sunday evenings and you can see right here, I know it's gonna be difficult to read for those of you who are on your iPhone or iPad, but he states things, he categorizes things, right? So either it's research, reviews, and other being editorials, commentaries, etc. Looking through this a little bit more thoroughly, I know you can't read it, but my intention is for you to sign up for this and therefore you don't have to read it off the little screen. But he breaks up the research by randomized controlled trials, systematic reviews and meta-analyses, observational studies, etc. And then all these, uh, things in blue here are clickable links, which makes things a lot easier because it tells you what generally came from. You can go to it directly and see what the data actually says, okay? He also has reviews and some of these are not from that particular week that they came out. It might be from different years, for example, over here, these are from 2017. But nonetheless, it's extremely important to at least eyeball this every week and pick out a couple things here and there which you may learn from. I know I go through about 25% of these because a lot of the stuff is honestly esoteric and not relevant to me. But this is a one-stop shop for a lot, a lot of data. And for those of you who are looking for a one-stop shop, hey, this is, this is definitely where you need to go, okay? So please sign up to this email, this newsletter, and you will learn a lot. Trust me, you'll stay up to date in the Jiffy. I sent this to people who have been influential to me and it's kind of opened up their eyes to a lot of new data because it's hard to keep in, keep track of everything. Moving along, something else that I, that I do is I have subscriptions to the table of contents of the three major journals in critical care and when I say major journals I mean by impact factor and those are uh, the blue journal from the American Thoracic Society which is something you have to pay for as well as the critical care journal from the Society of Critical Care Medicine for which I am a member I pay a couple hundred bucks every year for that as well as CHEST which is the other uh, society that I that I belong to and you don't necessarily need to pay for these subscriptions to get the table of contents well you actually don't have to pay for the subscriptions 
But when you get the emails from these particular publications once a week, once a month, you could just quickly scroll through them and see if there's something that is groundbreaking that catches your eye. At least that's what I do. And when you know it's CHEST or Society of Critical Care Medicine that publishes something awesome, I could go ahead and directly click on the link and open up the article and download it. But for those of you who are in academic institutions, i.e. medical students, nurses, residents, etc., you guys could get access to this by either using your institutional access in the United States or uh, internationally, or you could just ask somebody to email you the articles. Sorry if that upsets people, but you're trying to save people's lives. You can't. It's hard to pay for all these uh, subscriptions. So looking over, this is the the American Thoracic Society, and this is the home for the journal where they have all the latest articles. And then you can just click on this and go from there. For chest, you know, you get all the articles with regards to chest. And uh, I didn't open up the Society of Critical Care Medicine. But what, the, what these, um, as I click along over here, one of the benefits is, I just got an email, let me turn off all the sounds here. Uh, for example, when you look at CHEST, one of the benefits that they do is that they send you all the articles before they're actually published, as listed here, and you could just go ahead and open them up. This is particularly, this is uh, Intensive Care Medicine, which is another, another publication which I link to when they talk about position papers and things like that. Very important. New England Journal of Medicine, this is what their table of contents looks like. And a lot of these things are very esoteric, like I'm never going to read anything about this drug I can't even pronounce. But they also have, for example, review articles, and this is actually very important to me, it's prophylaxis against uh, upper GI bleeds in hospitalized patients, because this is actually going to change my practice. All right, and then uh, New England Journal of Medicine also does this particular email that you can sign up for, which is, and I actually pay for New England Journal of Medicine, it's like 50 something bucks a year, it's not, it's not a big deal. Uh, if you're in academics, it should be very easy to get access to this, but everything that's related to pulmonary critical care, they send you an email every once in a while, and it's a one-stop shop. I also sign, sign up for the BMC, and they also give me things related to critical care, and last but not least, this is what the table of contents looks like for the journal that's uh, called Critical Care Medicine, which is the journal that's, uh, that belongs to the Society of Critical Care. One of the other things that I do to keep myself up to date is that I actually have up to date on my phone and even for things that I do know how to take care of, I still look them up because there might be something new that I could learn. There could be something from the pathophysiology of the, of the illness that I didn't know from before that just reading that over and over again, it gets more embedded into my brain. I mean, I could go into about 90% of my shifts right now and not have to look up anything at all just because of how much I've read and all that, but I still go back and I read even the things that I know I still go back and read them over and over and over again because like that I always take something else away from that topic that's going to help me be better. The last thing I like to push is for you to join Twitter. And the reason why I like for you to join Twitter is that there's this whole free online access medicine uh, push that's going on right now to try to decentralize how people receive their information. and. If you go to my Twitter, you'll basically look at a bunch of people who I follow, but I, I follow a lot of people who are very influential, uh, such as Scott Weingard and Josh Farkas, who, who are two of the people who are on M mcrid.org, and they put out podcasts, and there's a ton of um, podcasts that exist out there for critical care, that there are things that I listen to while I'm driving on road trips and things like that, because utilizing your time wisely to try to be the best is something that's very important. I, you know, I definitely go to that mcrid.org website, uh, once, a, once a week or something like that to try to get more information, see if there's something else I can learn. Because there's a lot of common sense, uh, there's a lot of common sense medicine that exists that doesn't have much data and those particular web websites discuss it as well as some cutting edge things. Follow a bunch of different people on Twitter because you'll, you'll definitely learn a lot. I don't use it as a celebrity following tool. I do use it though as a tool to better myself. And one of the cool things is that you could actually interact with people who publish and who write these huge studies and kind of get their feedback on it. And it's a very academic, very academic and very uh, constructive medium for conversation if you are a constructive person, not if you're, you know, somebody who's a troll just trying to make people's life upset. But if you're on my channel, you know, you're not a troll by definition. You're somebody who's trying to get better, somebody who's trying to stay up to date. And 
I think that's all I wanted to say right now. You know, staying up to date is something that takes time. I try to do it while I'm at work, so like that at least I'm getting paid for it, so to speak. But I do do a lot of reading when I when I get out of work as well. I have a I have a strategy where I try to read one article a day and you know, analyze it. I tried to share a couple articles with you all. Hopefully I could continue to do that when I get a little bit more time. And one of the things that I'm thinking about doing, and let me know in the comments below if you would like for me to do it, is every Sunday when I get these emails from Rob McSweeney, those critical care reviews, which I emphasize that you read it. One of the things I've been thinking about doing with that is just quickly scrolling through it, opening up the articles and just going through the abstracts with you really quick so I can give you my takes on it. And maybe you can, you know, do a one-stop shop to stay up to date using my page rather than, and you know, while you're making breakfast or something like that, just playing in the background, even though my voice is what it is. Let me know if you think that would be a good idea. But that's my that's my talk for today. I hope you guys learned something. Give me a thumbs up. Help the channel grow. Share it. Subscribe. All those fun things. Stay up to date. And remember, this is to take care of people. I mean, this is not one of those. This is not a career where, excuse me, where you can fall out of date and think that life is life is gonna be good. Sorry, I just got gassy. Anyway, thank you all for watching this video. And have a great day.